I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll try to understand how to identify inverse relation. So we'll actually try to identify inverse relation from table of values, right? So I'll give you a few table of values and then we'll try to figure out whether they represent inverse relation or not, okay? So what we will do here is we'll just write some values. So x and y, x is independent variable, y is the dependent variable for us. So let's take values like uh, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 uh, for all of them. Okay. Okay. So let's take these values. Normally, these are standard values when you are sketching a line. Okay. So if I write down here some numbers like uh, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Will it represent inverse relation or not? This is one thing you need to figure out. And here in this case, let me write down numbers like, uh, uh, let's say, let's say three. So six, and here does not exist. So no number will go here. Okay. And then if I write a number, let's say minus six and uh, minus three here will it re represent inverse relation or not right so this is one thing or i could write numbers like uh, let's say minus four and this one as uh, as uh, minus two and this one as zero and this one as uh, two and this one as four right let us say these are my numbers now the question for you is from these three different relations, which ones are direct, which ones are inverse, right? So let's try to identify both, uh, direct and inverse. Direct and inverse relations. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, if you are investigating for direct, then what do we have? So for direct, the condition is that the ratio of uh, y and x should be always constant. So for direct, what we have normally is that the, the ratio is constant. That is to say, y divided by x equals to a constant. If we are working, if we get a relation in which uh, inverse is good, then in inverse, we know that the constant is the product of x and y. That is a constant. So if that condition is met for each and every value, and of course you cannot divide by 0, in that case, we have a direct relation. Right? Now, in direct relation, it is important to know that point 0 or point uh, which is 0, 0 lies on the graph right so on the graph so for that point we don't have to find the ratio but this point is taken as such okay for a direct relation since that lies on the graph and on inverse uh, origin can never be on the graph right so so these broadly gives you a quick way of figuring something out so if I have 0, 0, then we know very clearly that this one is not inverse. So we can write this as not inverse. In this case, we have 0 and y value as something. So we know this is also not inverse. So we don't even have to test these. If I give you some value on 0, then they can never be inverse, right? This is very important. And that we get from this part. That is to say that for inverse relation, origin can never, never be on the graph, right? So it is never a point on the graph. Origin can never be a point on the graph, right? So that is very important to understand. So we just rule out that these cannot be inverse. So we have to test only one of these, correct? Now, what are we testing for? Product x and y. These two, when multiplied, give you what? So let's create a table here to find the product x times y and see what that is. 
So we get minus 2 times 3s minus 6 minus 1 times 6s minus 6. This does not exist. Okay. And this is also minus 6. That is also minus 6. So clearly the relation which we have here is inverse relation. Where the constant is x times y, which is minus 6, right? So I could write this relation as y equals to minus 6 times 1 over x, right? So that will be the equation of this relation so far, right? Now, the second one is we can try these two for direct, right? We could try these two for direct. So what do we observe here is if you find the ratios which is 5 over 2, 7 over 1, 9 over 0. Now, when we get 0 and 9, that means this point is not origin, right? This is, this is not origin. Since it is not origin, it cannot be direct also. So you can rule that out. Is it okay? So let's test for this one. So here we have origin. Is it okay? So origin is a part. So that is perfect. So point zero zero lies on the graph. If it exists, it will always be on the graph. So that is okay for us. For all other values, we'll find the ratio of y over x. Is it okay? We'll find the ratio of y over x. So if I divide minus 4 by minus 2, what do I get? So let's make a column here and divide minus 4 by minus 2. So if I do minus 4 by minus 2, I get 2. If I do minus 2 divided by minus 1, I again get 2. And if I divide 2 by 1, I get 2. And if I divide 4 by 2, I also get 2. Is that okay? So the value is equal to 2, which is a constant. Okay? So y over x equals to 2 becomes the equation. So this equation will be y equals to 2, y over x equals to 2, or we would also write this equation as y equals to 2 times x. Do you see how easily we could find the equation? So y equals to 2 times x is the equation for the last relation which we have here. So this one happens to be direct. Do you see that? And the one in the center is the inverse. So this one is the inverse, correct? Since the product is constant, so I hope this property, these two properties, which is constant proportions, this is constant proportion, and that is constant product, helps us to find whether a relation is direct or inverse, right? So, so here, let me write down. For inverse relation, we are looking for constant product. Very easy to find. And once you find constant product, you get the equation also right so so the equation becomes x times y equals to the constant k i hope that helps to quickly figure out whether the given data corresponds to inverse relation or not i'm anil kumar you can always share and subscribe my videos thank you and all the best